So you've been thinking about going solar. Becoming a lot more popular these days. So do you want to be completely off grid or do you want a grid tied system? What's the difference? What kind of power will I need? How big will my solar array have to be? Does it have to be a big giant one? Or can I get by with something smaller? What about power needs? How many kilowatts will I need? What kind of appliances will I be running? And what about batteries? There's a lot of different types out there. Well, congratulations, you made it. You've searched the internet, researched YouTube, you have a lot of questions and you still are very confused, a lot like us. So sit back, relax, and join us while we discuss what we decided to do with our off-grid solar system. Welcome to the channel guys. We're talking about solar today and we're going to talk about our decisions that we made with our off-grid system. We are going completely off-grid. And that worries some of the people in our family uh, so, that think that that's not going to be a good idea for us. What is off-grid exactly, Kathy? <laughs> <laughs> off-grid just means that your major utilities are not connected to the public companies. So for example, here on Long Island, we were connected to sewer, water, and electric. All three of those things, we will be completely independent from the system. So we have our own well, we have our own septic system, and we will have our own solar system power plant. And where we are, we really had no choice when it came to the septic or the water. However, the electric, we had an option, but it really wasn't a viable option because it was very expensive. We had a 700 foot run underground and we both decided that we didn't want poles going through the trees yeah. and wires across the property. For the same amount of money that that would have ended up costing us, we could go solar and be completely independent. We have a couple of other reasons why we want to be off grid. I am sick and tired of my electric bill. Here on Long Island, in December, we got an electric bill that was over $500. And when you look at that bill, that's what they estimated us at. Our bill is very confusing because as far as we can tell, for the past three months, they really haven't done an actual reading. They just give us estimated use. And it's crazy to understand. And they estimated us for this year in December with an average temperature of 51 degrees, December of 2020, they estimated us at 24 kilowatt hours a day. Meanwhile, last year in December, at an average temperature of 45 degrees in 2019, we only used an actual amount of eight kilowatt hours a day. That's one of the reasons why I'm pretty sure that Rich and I are gonna be fine off grid. We don't use a lot of kilowatts. We've worked really hard over the last few years to get our kilowatt hours down. So for whatever reason, they tripled our usage for this year. And then you look at the bill, look at look, all the taxes, oh, the taxes and other and charges. The surcharges and the fees and why they all went up for no reason. We don't know why. So out of a normal bill, delivery and system charges are 44% of the bill. There's three different charges for your electric use. It's absolutely horrendous. I've never been able to balance my bill right to the kilowatt hour for what we're- For, for whatever the usage might for be. For whatever the usage is. 49% power <laughs> supply charges. That's how much it costs them to purchase oil and gas to produce the electricity. And then another 7% in taxes and other charges. And there's literally seven lines of taxes and other charges, which in my book is all taxes. Oh, one more positive. What? We live in a really remote area. Mm -hmm. And we were told that we have to have a backup generator to live in that area mm -hmm. because during storms, when the power goes out, it's out, it could be out for up to two weeks because we're literally a tiny little town way at the end of the line. So we're going to be the last to get fixed. So having solar, that shouldn't be a problem at all. Well, I guess the biggest thing is it's 100% our problem if something goes wrong. So we will have to make sure that we just have a little money and savings to take care of it in case something does break or go bad or break down. But I also see that as a positive because we can literally go out there. We don't have to right. wait for anyone. We don't have to depend on somebody and wait for the power to be turned back on. I'm going to be the guy going out there to fix it. <laughs> 
Now, if you're like me and you went on YouTube and you looked at a million different videos, uh, one of the things that drove me absolutely insane is I would get halfway through somebody's video on all their solar system only to find out that they were grid tied, which is completely different than being off the grid. A grid tied system is where you would still have panels and you're gonna make up, you're gonna make power and you're gonna offset the cost of your current electric bill, but you don't have any batteries for backup storage power. So if the power goes out from your local utility service, you're losing power to your house. You're still gonna need some kind of a generator backup or you're gonna to have to have a battery bank backup where that where you could have a disconnect switch and switch over to battery with an inverter to power your house. That's the only way you're gonna have power if you're a grid tied system. So in that situation you're almost sort of building an off grid system anyway. So And that's another thing people asked, is it is it legal to be off grid? And the answer is it really depends where you live and what the rules are there. So where we're living in the Adirondack Park, it's perfectly legal in the area that we are at. If we were in more of a township, it may not be. So if you're looking for grid, grid tied information, this is not the video for you. No. We're going to tell you what we've decided to do for off grid only. Exactly. So what did we decide to do? What, what, what is next? Up? We got these notes <laughs> oh, here. So we I have so many focused. notes. I've done so much research. There's a lot of information out there. There really is. And it's I do the research. Down. Rich does the work. <laughs> yeah. I'm better with the nuts and bolts of it all. I mean, I know a little bit what's going on up here, but for me to get it out and communicate it, this is why. I'm not know. tying the wires. He is. What do um, we got? Basically, the first thing I just want to say is neither of us have ever done this before. We've done two little solar panels on the shed, and Rich is good with electricity. He knows how to do basic electrical work, but he's not an electrician. And that little shed system is, is perfect for what we need, and there'll be a link <laughs> to that on this side? Or is It'll it be over here. Side? Side? Okay, good. Um, but this will be the first time that we're ever doing a system of this size, and it's so important to us to do it right that we've decided to go through a company that basically does it for you. We're doing it ourselves, but what this company that we wanna buy through does is make sure they, they assemble it themselves, make sure everything works, they, everything comes pre-wired, ready to go. You know, They help you custom design the system and they give you instructions and then they're available for to talk to as customer service as you're doing it yourself. So we're not hiring anybody to put this in for us. We're going to be doing it ourselves, but it, we're buying it as a complete and total kit. Right, all the components are matched to work together, the wire, the kit, the panels. I kept watching videos and, and one house would have a 1200 watt system and they're great, they're fine for the year. And then another one has a 13,000 watt system and they're barely making it. And that's when I decided that we really needed to do a little bit more research into what we really, really, truly needed. Because of our electric bill, it was really hard for us to figure out exactly what kind of wattage we were really using the way they make their bill. We just couldn't figure it out. So we went out and bought one of these <laughs> little watt meters which is very handy and we will know exactly how many watts our refrigerator uses, the washer dr or dryer, that kind of thing, etc. That's well, well, I'll link to that below. We've been using that one. That's an older model. I think I've had it for close to eight years now. We just used it yesterday. To right, do, we were uh, figuring out like with the TV and the computers and we had all that stuff plugged the in. The cable box. And, uh, they use a lot, believe it or not. <laughs> yeah, it ends up. So you have to think about everything. For us, we're going to do a lot of propane-powered uh, appliances, like with the boiler. Well, we're really the... fortunate because we're planning a brand new house. Right. From scratch. And that means that we can choose exactly what to run on electricity and what to run on propane. And on top of that, we can choose the lowest wattage appliances that we can find. We can carefully hand pick them. But that's where you have to start. You have to know exactly what you really need. Now, I wanna just give you a warning. There's a lot of solar calculators out there and you go and you put everything in and it tells you what you need. The first one I went to, based on what we put in, told me that I needed 13,000 watts a year. 
and I knew that was totally bogus because I have my electric bills. I've been keeping track for years. I know we were only using a little over 8,000 watts a year. Right. So there's no way on God's green earth we needed a 13,000 watt system. We did find a really good solar calculator that is much better. And that one said that we needed a system that was around 4,000 watts. And then even though it said we needed a 4,000 watt system, I know that most of the systems only operate at 80% efficiency for the most part. So we're going to get a 6,400 watt system. The only things we're going to be running on electricity are the well pump, the well, the ventilation system, yes, refrigerator, yes, freezer, lights, mm -hmm. and some basic computer things. Computers, TV, and the usual stuff. That's it. Maybe sometimes we'll use like a crock pot or something for cooking. We'll or... use some power tools in the garage or something right. like that, you know. In the summer though, when we have a lot more sun hours, we're going to have a surplus. So we can use all the power we want during the summer. Should be and fun. I don't think we'll ever have a problem. We're going to use the monocrystalline panels because they're supposed to be better. Um, more efficient, longer life. They will be 320 watts each, and we're going to have 20 of those. So it'll be a total of 6,400 watts that can be generated per sun hour. We plan on putting the solar panels on the back of our woodshed so that they're low to the ground and easily reached and can be cleaned off throughout the winter. That's gonna be a nice setup. I can't wait to build that. The second thing that's really important that comes is the charge controller, and that comes pre-wired and connected to the mm -hmm. inverter. So we'll talk about the inverter next. Inverters, they are confusing. And watching all the YouTube videos, I think that the people that were really unhappy with their systems did not size their inverter properly. If you're planning an off-grid system, you really want to look at that inverter. That's probably one of the most important things. You can always add more panels, take panels away, whatever you want to do, but that inverter is going to determine how much you can actually use at one given time. So the inverter that we're looking at is 6,800 watts, which is a little bigger than our system. So it's 6,800 continuous running watts. That means we can run 6,800 watts every hour throughout the whole day. Right. As long as we can provide that energy into the batteries. It has a surge of 8,500 we'll watts, something like that. Over right? 30 minutes over running. Over 30 minutes, right. So right. it has an 8,500 watt surge, which is pretty good. I don't think we're ever gonna... And then it has a 12,500 watt surge for 60 seconds. For 60 seconds. So that means like if your well pump is running and your, what else is running? The refrigerator cycles on and we've got a bunch of TVs going and all the, I mean, literally we'd have to have everything like start up at the same time. It's probably never going to right. happen. But that is where a lot of people run into their problems. They don't have enough surge for multiple things to run at the same time. The next thing would be the batteries are really important. Batteries are very, batteries, they're, they're very, that's like the most expensive part of the system is the batteries. For us, for us. Uh, for us, and there's a lot of different types of batteries, lead acid batteries, lithium batteries, and then we're going to use the lithium iron phosphate, is that what they are? Yes. And uh, these batteries are, what are they, 48 volts each, 7,400 watts each, and we're going to use two of them. So for, we'll have 14,000. 800 watts of battery storage but what makes these batteries so awesome is the fact that a there's no off gassing so we could keep them in our right. utility room in our home b they do not combust and c we can add additional batteries at any time we want and d we can actually they they can run down and still operate they won't just die other batteries we would have to build a separate little building outside because of the off gassing we would have to some of them you have to make sure there's water in them uh, yeah the lead acid batteries you don't want to be yeah. you don't want to be dealing with that i don't want the danger of them what you were saying about these batteries if you do run them down you could run them down something like 3000 times you know, yeah. a crazy amount. It'll, it'll never happen. They'll These batteries last. are going to last a long time. And the biggest, one of the biggest uh, pluses, I think, is that, like you were saying, if I have batteries that are a couple years old and I want to add another battery to the system, it's not going to, they don't have to be the same age. 
the right. bad, the bad which is the not true for the other kinds. Right. And the last thing that we're going to have, which is going to make our system really just amazing, is the generator. Well, that's another 14,000 watts, that generator, propane powered, and that'll be a backup system as if, the, if we have too many gray days and there's nothing and the batteries. charging the batteries and the batteries get to a certain yeah. level, which is going to be adjustable, the generator will kick on. We'll never be without power. So, you know, there's a few people in my family that are really concerned that we're not going to have the energy that we need. But I think, based on all the planning that we've done, I think we're going to be just fine. And we're really excited to see how that goes. Like I said, this one here does all the research. I'm kind of the nuts and bolts of it all. I got a little bit of know-how. I know how to follow directions. We're good to go. Can't wait to get started. <laughs> so. Stay tuned, subscribe if you're interested in seeing how this works out, if you're interested in seeing our earth sheltered house build. We just sent out that letter with our first payment towards having the blueprints finalized. So uh, that's about it. I think, you know, if, uh, if we missed anything, please leave a comment below or any ideas that you might have uh, will be all ears. We will see you on the next video. I'm Kathy. And I'm Rich. We are creating a simple life in the Adirondacks. Thank you.